Good morning. Welcome to Begin in the Word. Today we'll be looking at James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There's one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? For this short text today, James gives the command to not speak evil of one another, brethren. So this is about speaking evil of brethren. Speaking evil means to malign or to slander, to call someone's character into question, or specifically to misrepresent someone's character. In evil speaking, there's often an element of insults that go on. For instance, I might find myself evil speaking if a brother cuts me off in the parking lot and I meet him in the church building and I say, you're the worst, you're selfish, you don't care about anybody else. And I'll go around telling everybody else what a crummy Christian he is and a terrible person. In those cases, I'm speaking evil and I'm judging. James doesn't want these sort of quick evil speakings and shoutings. We've seen these sorts of things condemned for the entirety of the last several, several weeks we've been in this study. James doesn't want these sorts of things around, this quick, snap, overblown condemnation. He says, whoever speaks evil of a brother and judges a brother also speaks evil of the law, and they judge the law. So speaking evil of our brethren and of our brothers judging them is doing synonymously with the law. So we should realize the high emphasis on law keeping that comes with representing our brothers correctly. Now, obviously, the idea of judgment is most prevalently seen in Matthew chapter 7, verse number 1. So I invite you to go look at our video over there where we deal with that. Before we talk specifically about what James is condemning, let's talk about what he's not condemning. All right, let's talk about what he is not condemning. James is not condemning a thoughtful, prayerful, loving critique based on reflection that admonishes someone to obey the word of God, where we hold ourselves to that standard as well. All right, let me say that again. He is not condemning people who thoughtfully, prayerfully, and lovingly critique others based on a reflection that admonishes someone to obey the word of God, where they hold themselves to that standard. That's not what he's doing here. That, that is not by any means out of bounds. And if I can say that, the reason I know he's not doing that is because that's what he's doing right here. He is thoughtfully, lovingly, obviously prayerfully critiquing them, calling them to obey the word of God, and he's holding himself to that standard as well. He's making a judgment about judging. So there's some level of judgment that is okay. James is not calling for people to stop using the word of God as a lens through which they interpret and make sense of reality. Right? He's definitely not doing that. So if that's not what James is doing, what is the context of this? What is it that James is actually condemning? What is it he's judging and telling us not to judge? Well, it's things that fall out of that purview. If we're unthoughtful, unloving, harsh, if it's not after the word of God or it's hypocritical, then we should stop. When we give critiques that are not based in this sort of way, we are going to drag scripture through the mud. When we claim that our judgment equals the word of God, when we have evil intent in our hearts, as he talked about, when we speak evil and condemn others based on our judgment, then we speak evil of the law and judge the law. And so we should be very cautious here as we think about this. When we say, this is what God says, we should say that with extreme caution, because if we are wrong, we have misrepresented the word of God and we have condemned our brother. When we claim that our judgment equals the word of God, where we present it with unnecessary harshness. We misrepresent what God has said, and that is a terrible place to be. Further, James points this out, that if you judge the law, if that's the posture you're in, then you are not a doer, which should obviously remind us back of James chapter 1. James chapter 1, where he talks about be a doer and not a hearer only. Doer and not a hearer only. Here, by inserting this word judge, you're not a doer, but you are a judge. He's he's hinging on that same idea that the, those who do the word of God are those who are blessed. And so if we only judge, if we only set back, and that's our primary mode of engaging the word of God, is to point fingers at others and not ourselves, then we're no longer doing it. And we are only a judge. Obviously, biblical discernment 
and obedience are not mutually exclusive. It's not that you can't be a doer and make judgments. That's not the case. But we've got to ask which side are we on? Are we on the side of doing the word of God? Or are we on the side of being condemning in what we say? When we interact with the word of God, do we look for how we can be changed and live it out? Or do we look for ways we can tear other people down and point out other groups and these sorts of things? Does our character represent we're living out the word or we're just always pointing fingers? We should be aware of that. We should be aware of that because there is one lawgiver. There's one lawgiver and he's able to save or to destroy. God is the one who's in that place. Our judgments must be rooted in the word of God. Who are we to judge another? Well, if it's after our judgment, we are no one. But if it is after the word of God, it may indeed be appropriate. And so we should not seize that authority for ourselves because it disrespects of God. When we try to be the judge and set ourselves up as the standard, we have disrespected not only the word of God, but God himself, because there's one lawgiver. So where does this land for us today? Well, again, I'm not saying, and I fully believe that James is not saying there's not a place for a thoughtful, kind, prayerful admonishment to continue in the word of God. Even an intense and fierce, passionate rebu rebuke that is rooted in love is, is appropriate at times. However, I think we can be obedient to the scripture by not having a posture of judgment, not having a posture of judgment. And what do I mean by that? I mean that it is not our base reaction. That when something happens immediately, it's not to try and find where other people are wrong. We may realize that, but we train our minds so that it's not the natural disposition and especially not to speak that judgment, lest we speak evil and we think wrongly. Now we need to, as we've said, consider the word of God. Consider how actions people are having line up with that. But if our basic assumption is always to condemn, we are probably out of line with the word of God. Instead, when there's concerns, we must be thoughtful and biblical and compassionate. We should judge with an open hand of help and not a pointed finger of condemnation. And so I want to encourage you to do that today, to be someone who is a doer of the law of Christ and not a judge. Thank you so much for joining us today on Begin in the Word. It's our prayer that just as you've begun today in the Word of God, you live out today in the Word of God.